All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you, Salvador. So, might not have occurred to you, but I am not TJ. What? I know. Shocking. I thought maybe if I put a cap on backwards, I could try it. My ponytail? Yeah. So, um, TJ is getting to spend the night off tonight, and so I'm excited to be with you tonight. My name is Jessica. TJ and I... That's a good sign. You cheer for me that I know my name. Perfect, perfect. So TJ and I get to work together a lot in the youth space. You've probably seen me here, maybe not every Wednesday, but a lot of Wednesdays. And so I'm excited to be here with you tonight. Um, Before we jump in to our message tonight, I want to just lift up beach baptisms to you. Did anyone go to beach baptisms last, last year? A couple? Okay, well, we had eight, nine baptisms here a couple weeks ago, and this is another chance where if you haven't been baptized yet, this might be your next step. This is on Saturday, June 1st. It's up at a beach in Jupiter, and I know there were some people who are interested in maybe being baptized, but it felt like a little bit scary to read your whole story in front of everyone. This is a chance where we do beach baptisms a little differently, so if you're not quite wanting to share everything in front of everyone, but you want to be baptized, this might be a good step for you. So if you're interested in being baptized, talk to your small group leader, talk to me, talk to TJ, and we will help you get signed up. Good deal? All right. So tonight we are on our last week of the Family Rules series. And so, you know, because I get to be the kind of guest speaker today, I brought candy because that's what we get to do, right? Now... This candy is for anyone who can tell me one of the other family rules that you have learned. There were five other ones. All right. Oh, gosh. I don't want to call on people. Mr. Josh, you call on people. (laughs) All right. Right here. Yes. Come on up. Pick a candy. All right. What's another one? A different one. Tell me a different one from this side of the room. Sophia. Awesome. Come get one. Wow, you guys are impressive. Okay, back to this side of the room. Carla. Yep, pick it up. Radical host. Yay. Okay. Another one. Let's see. I'm going to come back towards the back. Yep. What? We have an open seat. That kind of goes with radical host. So pause there. All right, Joseph. We are modern monks. Come get one. I'm seeing what do we... Okay, I think there's one left. Anyone know the last one? <laughs> we wear deodorant. That's a good one. Okay, sure. We all contribute. Come get one. Okay, and where did my friend go with we have an open seat? Come on, get the last one. Good job. That was actually way more successful than I thought it would be. Good job. All right. Very nice. Okay, so this week we're on the very last one, which is in our family, we are pace setters. Can you guys say that with me? In our family, we are pace setters. So I don't know about you, but pace setter, I didn't immediately know what that was, what a pace setter is. And so I did a little research and I found out that a pace setter is someone in a race who sets the pace. Is that helpful? Does that help you know? I know. Pretty good, right? Well, I looked at how they're used, and I want to show you a picture of a car race. And in, yep, okay, so this is a pace car in a race. The pace car goes in front of all the other cars, and the other cars are not allowed to pass it. So that car sets the speed, it sets the safety of the race, and no other car is supposed to touch it or come near it. Now, I saw a lot of crash photos of the pace car, so apparently it doesn't work exactly like it's supposed to, but that's one example of a pace setter. Here's another one from a running race. Okay, so in long distance races, a lot of the times these race organizers, they hire someone to be a pace setter, and they run at the front. You can see this guy is wearing a different color to to show that he is the pace setter, and they do this because they want to make the race more fair. So this article was saying that these other runners, they sometimes play mind games where they try to like run really fast first, and then so the other runners will use all their energy and they can't compete well later. These pace setters, they go out front and then everyone else tries to keep up with them, and so everyone runs a more fair race. Or if someone's trying to set a world record, they might hire someone to be a pace setter so they know I have to keep up with this person if I want to beat the world record. 
Okay, and then the last example, this is kind of on the opposite end of a pace setter. I'm going to show you this picture. This is the, the um, let's see, what do they call it? Well, it's the big red bus at the end of a marathon. So basically, if you're running too slow of a pace, they come pick you up and transport you to the end of the race. <laughs> so I don't know what that's called. Not exactly a pace setter, but, uh, you know, if you're too slow, they're just going to drive you to the end. So that might be the bus I'm on. All right, so that's a pace setter. The important thing here is that a pace setter controls how the race is going. They set the speed and they serve as really the example for everyone else in the race. So tonight, I want you to think about your life like a race. So this isn't in your notes. I don't even think it has a blank, but maybe write it down there that my life is a race. This is a way for us to think about our lives, and it's something, it's a, it's something that actually is talked about in Scripture by a guy named Paul. Paul is someone who wrote a lot of the New Testament. He really started a lot of the first churches, and over and over again, he talks about how our lives are like a race. I want to read a couple of verses to you about how he says this. This is from 1 Corinthians, which means he was writing a letter to a church in Corinth, and he said this. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So Paul kind of uses this metaphor of your life being a race over and over and over as he's talking to these other churches. So think for a minute about how your life is like a race. It has a beginning, right? Does everyone's life have a beginning? Yes. Your life also has an end, okay? Just like a race. There's a way to run to live your life that will lead to winning. There's a way to run or live your life that's going to be harder, that would lead to something that might feel like losing. And just like a race that has a prize, like Paul says, our lives can lead to a prize too. That's what he said. We, we run for a prize that, that basically that, uh, that will last forever is what he said. So if you are someone who follows Jesus, your prize is that even now in this life, you get to live life with him that's hopeful and that's happy and that you can feel loved in and you can know that it will last forever. So those are some of the ways that our life is like a race. So if our life is like a race and we are pace setters, there are three things we need to know. The first thing is we train for our race. Say that with me. We train for our race. Okay, so Paul said that in those verses I just read. He said, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Who's, shout out some of your favorite athletes. Serena Williams, Patrick. Williams. Okay. LeBron James is someone's sunshine. That's very nice. Very good. <laughs> okay, great. So all of these athletes, all of these athletes, did they just wake up and be amazing? N no. <laughs> they might want you to think that, but that's not true. And you guys have talked about this in youth before, right? Anything you want, you have to train for. So this is kind of worth saying this again because it's so true. We train for our race. So what does that mean? We have to be intentional about how we prepare ourselves, how we train. So physically, you train, right? You, some, what does it mean to train physically? What might you do? Lift weights, work out, run laps. run laps. Yeah, but it also means for your life physically, even if you're not an athlete, getting enough sleep, eating healthy, making wise choices with friends. And your life training means trying in school or setting goals. And your faith, you're doing right now some faith training because you've come to youth. It's going to church. It's praying. It's reading the Bible. All those are ways we train for our race. The next thing is that we run our race. Everyone say that. We run our race. Say it and put emphasis on the hour. We run our race. Yes, just like Roland said, we run our race. So what I want you to know here is that you run your race, your individual one. 
not anyone else's. That's really important for you to know. You have a specific race, a specific purpose, a specific life that God designed for you to do. So think about the pace setter, the picture of the the car in front of all the other cars. The driver of that pace car, do you think that he would have been successful at being the pace setter for the running race? Probably not, unless he's like insanely talented, right? Same thing for the race, the guy who was running. He probably couldn't drive that pace car. They're qualified for their specific race they're running. And that's true for us too. Think right now in your head of something that you're good at or something you enjoy doing. Whatever that thing might be. Okay, those aren't just things that you like. They aren't just things you're good at. It's a gift God has given you or an interest God has given you, even if it's playing video games or riding BMX or being good at talking to people or being good at at organizing things. Each of those gifts are things God has given you to run your race and live your life. Um, God designed you with a certain purpose in mind and a certain race to run, And so that means at your job and your school and your family and friends, what you do doesn't look like what anyone else does, right? It doesn't mean it's easy. And I know maybe sometimes I think I remember in middle and high school, people always asking me like, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What are you going to be? And I didn't know for a long time. And I'm doing a job right now that I did not go to school for (laughs) or get any education for originally. And so you don't have to know right now what you want to do or what your purpose is. But God is giving you things that you like or that you're good at that will help show you what his purpose is in your life. The other thing I want you to know about that, that your race is your race, is that nothing can disqualify you from that race. Right? So we all make mistakes We all might make a bad choice, lots of bad choices. We might go what we think is the wrong way. But that race that God designed you for is still yours. And nothing you can do or nothing anyone can do to you can take that away from you. So we run our race. And then finally, the last point I want you to know tonight is that we set the pace. So say that. We set the pace. All right, pace setters. Obviously, we had to say we set the pace, right? The pace setter determines how the race goes, leads the pack, sets the example. It's really the person who is the most experienced or the most skilled, the best at what they're doing. They're the ones that get to set the pace. But here's what's really cool about God, and I want you to hear this. God doesn't work the way the world does. So God doesn't just choose people who are the smartest or the most educated or the best to make a difference and to set the pace. He wants to use every single one of you, even when you're young. And that's exactly what the verse that Salvador read for us earlier says. I want us to look back up at that verse again. This is Paul, again, the same one who calls our life a race. And he's writing to Timothy, who is a young pastor. Let's read this verse. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, so how you talk, how you act, in love, in faith, and in purity. So see that first part where it says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young? That must mean that people were looking down on Timothy, right? The reason Paul wrote that letter is because obviously Timothy was having some problems, People were saying, you're too young to leave this church. I don't need to listen to you. You don't have good ideas. You're not old enough to know that. Or you haven't had enough experience. And maybe some of you have heard that or felt that before. Maybe you felt like people say you're too young or you don't know or you can't understand or you won't know that till you're an adult. Anyone ever felt or heard those sorts of things before? So this is Paul speaking to you. Right? Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But he says, set an example. Let's look at just that phrase for a minute. Set an example. This is what God is calling you to. If you haven't listened to anything else I've said yet tonight, tune in for the last three minutes right here. Okay? 
set an example. You have two choices if your life is a race. You either get to be the pace setter out front, leading the way in your life and deciding how things are going to go, or you can let someone else be the pace setter and you're following and trying to keep up with them. Okay, I'm going to say those two choices again. In your life, you either get to be the pace setter and the leader and choosing how you want to live your life, or you're following someone else who's making your choices. And what I'm assuming here is when you're out in front, you're actually following Jesus, right? When you're the pace setter, you're following Jesus. You are following someone, but you're not following other people or social media or influencers or what the world's telling you to do. You get to be the pace setter. So what might it look like to be a pace setter in different areas of your life? So a pace setter is someone who does things a little bit differently, right? Because they lead the crowd. So maybe at school that means... Everyone else is cheating on a homework assignment. You decide not to. Maybe it means people are talking badly about someone in the class and you stand up for that person, right? And your family, it might be how you react to your parents, how you treat your siblings. On your sports team, maybe you're the one who invites people to pray before a game. At youth, it means that maybe even if your friends aren't worshiping or aren't engaging, maybe you are. You get to be the pace setter and the leader. Now, here's what I know about that. Sometimes being a pace setter can be lonely. Right? Think back again to the picture of the car in front, to the picture of the man running in front. They were by themselves. Right? The crowd was behind them. So sometimes being a pace setter can be lonely because not everyone wants to make the choices you make. But I don't want you to underestimate the way God can use you even when you are young. So even if you are 11 or 12 or 15 or 17 or young like one of us super young adult leaders, (laughs) that's right, you get to still set the pace and no one can look down on you when you were young. (laughs) Nope, just young. Sorry, Roland. So when I was a kid growing up, my family did not go to church. We occasionally went, like maybe we would do a VBS, probably because my mom just wanted us to get out of the house, but we didn't really go to church. And in eighth grade, someone invited me to a youth group like this, and they invited me to go on a mission trip, which was like kind of like our camp. And while I was at that mission trip, I decided to give my life to Jesus. And my family didn't really understand it. They didn't really, they were like, well, yeah, we celebrate Christmas, so we're Christians. But they didn't understand what it meant to really have a relationship with Jesus. And that was hard for me because it felt lonely sometimes. Like, I would go all through high school. I went to church by myself. My family did not come with me. Obviously, youth, you come by yourself. But even on Sundays, I would go. My family wouldn't be with me. And I prayed that they would come. And I prayed. And I I would feel lonely sometimes. And so maybe some of you are the first ones to come to church or the first ones to think about what it might look like to follow Jesus. But even when you feel lonely out in front, I think what I want you to know tonight is that you never are actually alone, right? So even when you're being a pace setter and you're out in front and you feel like, but all my friends are, are back over here, Jesus is always with you. He's always with you. Even when you feel lonely, you can know that God will always be by your side. So tonight, as we we wrap up, before we sing another song, I want you to ask God this question. It's where are you asking me to be a pace setter? And now when I say, ask God that question, some of you might be like, okay, what's God going to do? Like, what is, is there going to be a voice from heaven? Like, what does it mean when I say, ask God a question? So in my life, when I ask God something, then what I try to do is write down the first thought that just pops into my mind. Okay, and so maybe you want to use the back of your note sheet or your notebook paper, or whatever. And I want you to ask God, where are you asking me to be a pace setter? And I want you to just quietly jot down the first couple of things that come to your mind. And if you're not into this and you don't feel like God's going to talk to you, that's fine. Be respectful of the people around you. 
And so let's just take that question and ask God, where do you want me to be a pace setter? Father God, thank you that you are a God who never leaves us. That you are a God who gives us strength when we need the courage to be pace setters, to look different from people around us. Thank you that you are always with us, Lord. That we never need to feel lonely because we know you are by our sides. And God, I just pray that you would make every student in this room, God, that you would make them pace setters in their own lives, that they would just be the example for those who are around them, not just their friends, but for all the adults in their lives, Lord, that they would just shine your light so brightly, God. And just pray that you would pour your spirit out on them tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, 